going everyone? It's Gavin from Balls to You, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about why I feed African soft furred rats or Maltese to my collection, and I don't feed normal or common rats. So let's get into a few facts. The few facts are this: I have fed my snakes over the years a mixture of common rat and African soft furred rat. So this is factual. Um, the, the African soft furred rat has always been the better of the two for me. And let's talk a little bit about, let's, let's, let, let's rewind a little bit, probably as far as five years ago, maybe even longer, uh, but as little as five years ago, the African soft furred rat, if your snake or you was buying a ball python that was, that had, uh, that was on African soft furred rats, um, the price would be a lot lower for that animal because African soft furred rats were harder to get hold of or more expensive. So with that being said, a lot of people thought that because that snake was on an African soft furred rat, that the actual um, snake itself was a picky feeder. Let's look at it with a bit more common sense. In Africa, where they're from, in parts of Africa, there is no common rat. They do not eat common rats in Africa. In actual fact, the multi or the African soft furred rat is known in Africa as the common rat. So one of its natural stable diets is an African soft furred rat. Way back in the day, when we were buying uh, ball pythons, if it was on African soft furred rats, it was kind of frowned upon, oh, you know, it's a picky feeder and these African soft furred rats are more expensive. For me, I looked into it and I was kind of like, but this is the snake's natural food. Why is it such a, you know, why, why should it be such a problem for, for us here in the UK? So with that being said, I started breeding a mixture of both. Um, I was breeding common rats and African soft furred rats. Because when you get into breeding ball pythons, my advice would be you're gonna have to consider or you should consider breeding a rodent as well it kind of goes hand in hand and if you're if you've got someone who breeds rodents who you know he's not that far that's fine that's okay but as you produce the babies you probably will need some live babies or live rodents for your baby snakes that's facts okay real talk with that being said um, I want to make you guys aware that for me I always pushed that the African soft furred rat was the better out of the two. And the reason for this is uh, I've seen this over the years of um, my snakes growing and feeding, etc., etc. So before we go and look at some African soft furred rats, um, I want to tell you some facts, as I keep saying, this is facts. When the snakes digest the African soft furred rat, what I find is that they, it stays in their belly for longer. In other words, they seem to absorb more from the African soft furred rat. And I refer to this in one of my older videos, that it's almost like steak for your snakes. A steak is better form of meat than a beef burger. So when I say it's like a steak for your snakes, that's because of, that's me trying to get it across to you guys that this is, this is the facts, the, you know, it, it is better. I see a difference. So they tend to absorb and take more nutrients from the African soft furred rat. And how do I know this? It's a bit yucky, but basically they're poo. <laughs> when the snakes poo or defecate, it seems to be not as smelly. It seems to be they don't defecate so much. Uh, and it also takes longer for them to defecate. So when they do poo, uh, it doesn't smell that bad and also it's very little compared to a normal common rat and again I fed both to my snakes and both of you know I'm not trying to discredit those people or the common rat for you know feeding your snakes they're your snakes if they're happy on rats happy days and we're not going to talk about mice we're just going to be talking about the the, the common rat and the, the African soft furred rat for me um, that made a massive difference because the odor in the room comes from the snakes wee and poo, you know? And even though snakes themselves have a particular smell or, or reptiles have a certain smell, it doesn't help 
when they're pooing and weeing and it stinks. So the fact for me is that the odor from the wee and the poo when the snakes are feeding African soft furred rats or Maltese is 10 times less than when they feed on normal rats. And again, normal rats is fine. I fed you know my collection on normal rats. I bred normal rats. Um, I went through a phase of um, you know my hatchlings uh, because a lot of people couldn't get African soft rats or couldn't afford those. So I used to feed my hatchlings on um, normal common rats, and then the ones I was keeping, I would then switch on to African soft rats. But over the years. Um, African soft rats or Maltese have been easier to get hold of and you can do that via a number of frozen rodent suppliers. Now again here in the UK we feed predominantly frozen thawed. Um, it, it, it's simple, in the wild they wouldn't eat frozen thawed. Over here we tend to try and feed them more frozen thawed because the thought of an animal killing another animal is hard to, to take in. Um, but that's the reality, you know. Um, I have some snakes which are live feeders, and my responsibility, even though I love my African soft furred rats and I give them the best, my um, my responsibility. I am a reptile breeder. I am a snake breeder, so my priority is the snake. And if that snake is feeding live, then unfortunately, it's got to have live for its own health uh, benefits. So I digest. Or diverse anyway um, so going back to the rats side of things they tend to uh, defecate uh, less and the smell is a lot less um, the other thing um, I've noticed is that the colors and I wouldn't say the growth rate I would say more of the quality of growth let's say is better the colours just look phenomenal. The snakes, because they they like they, they prefer the multi or the African soft furred rat over the common rat, I tend to find they feed better. Their feeding response is stronger. You know, people laugh at me when I use my hooks to open the tubs, but trust me, their feeding response, because they can smell the African soft furred rat that's defrosting in the room, drives them nuts. So I don't want them to bite me because then I've got an issue of potentially um, them um, latching onto me, me having to get them off, uh, maybe them damaging their teeth, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I use my hook to open the tubs and trust me, their feeding response is nuts. So it tends to, I find that it tends to gear them up into getting fed. The other reason is because I tend to find a 50 gram which is probably about that big, a 50 gram African soft furred rat can feed a male from 600 grams all the way up to a female, which you know could be up to three kilos. I mean, I have females which are five kilos and they still have, once a week, they have a 50 gram rodent. Don't get me wrong, you know, if I've got an X breeder that's up to 100 grams, because X breeders can get up to 100 grams and maybe 120 grams, um, you know, I will give her the slightly big one. But on average, an XL multi or an XL African soft furred rat is normally around about the 50 gram mark. Now, like I said, it's pretty much one size feeds all. And if you've got a big collection, and you take out all these rodents and they're all different sizes and then that particular snake doesn't eat that rodent and it's that big you can't really give it to anything else unfortunately that rodent will probably end up going in the bin and it's a waste of money so i break down my feeding regime over three days or four days depending on on what rack or the other thing I'm, i'll do like i've just said is i'll do a rack a day until i've fed the whole room um it, it, it helps as well because i'm not in in the snake room for hours on end trying to feed frozen thawed it also helps if one snake doesn't eat because it's happened to go into shed i've got other snakes i can offer it to so i'm not wasting my food so with that being said, uh, they feed, their feeding response is better. 
the size of prey is more easily manageable regarding who I can give what size rodent to, then I know they absorb more of the rodents, so they take more nutrients, which will help with growth rate. I don't give them African soft rats to grow them up quickly. I give them African soft rats because I find they absorb more nutrients from it. The poos don't smell so bad. The wees don't smell so bad. And a lot of my breed males will still breed and feed when they're on African soft rats. So the benefits just far outweigh normal rats for me. Um, but with that being said, let's get into the rat barn. I'll go and show you some examples. So I used to breed all my rodents, but it became a job within itself and time just wasn't on my side. So literally I cut down breeding uh, my own rodents and I went direct to my friend who was breeding rodents or too many rodents uh, for his collection. So he was helping me with mine. However, with that being said, um, I am slowly starting to up my production uh, and I'll show you guys exactly how I do it and why I do it. So let's get into the rat barn and have a look. Okay, so we're here in the rat barn or the rat shed, whatever you want to call it, we are here. Um, you don't have to have a dedicated space or a shed uh, to breed a colony for your collection, especially if you're breeding ball pythons, as I said. However, I clean, I have a system here and I clean every Saturday morning. Today is now Wednesday and the smell isn't that bad at all. Um, occasionally during the day when it is warm, I do leave the shed door open, there is vent holes as well within the shed that the air can circulate. Circulation of air is a necessity in any space, whether it be snakes, you know, rodents, humans. The circulation of good, fresh air, and this doesn't mean that the, that the rodents or the snakes will go cold. It's a circulation of fresh air. So the fresh air comes in, the bad stagnant air goes out, and that's just standard airflow. It is a necessity. So I have brought some more racks to upscale, some rodent racks from Adam over at TA Exotics. If you're not following Adam on Instagram or his YouTube channel, I'll put a link in the description box below. Go over and give him a follow. He's a good guy. He's holding my racks while we're in quarantine at the moment. So I will be upscaling the production of my rodents. At the moment here, you see this rack. This rack here is a homemade rack that I did myself. Um, it works very well for grow out. So at the moment, this is a six tub system. So, and within these grow, and within this grow up rack, um, I start off obviously small size and they go bigger as they go down. Now, as they go down, I will, um, I start off with, um, let's say 50, um, 50 ish babies, let's say in the top one. And as they go down, I do take, so basically when they get down to the bottom, when they get to around about 50 grams, they are, there's probably about 10 in there. Um, obviously some of my snakes feed live and then I do freeze some down. Uh, on production wise, I don't keep tabs on how many I produce, but the, the colonies I keep tends to be one male to either three or four females. And I find that works. The other thing I don't do, um, I don't overfeed. So in other words, uh, you'll see that the, the rodents will waste a lot of food. The minute it falls on the floor, it tends to be that they don't eat it. So what I try and do is I try and feed uh, smaller scoops so that they will try and eat everything that's, that's there, but you will get some wastage. Now regarding the food that I use, I tend to use a good quality dog food, which is normally Arkwright, and it's the chicken version. Now I have had, or I do know people who um, say that uh, sale rolls, pig sale rolls, do not work for rodents. Well, I can tell you I had great success with sale rolls. Now, 
maybe that's the way I was keeping it. Maybe it was the style or the, the, the type of sew rolls I was using. Um, however, I can't get sew rolls anymore. So I did used to use Arkwrights. I would then went to sew rolls, uh, struggled to get them. So I've then gone back onto Arkwrights or a dog food or a good dog food, which has the right amount of protein, fats and ingredients that it needs. Uh, with that being said, like I said, if you are feeding sour rolls and you're having great success, if it ain't broke, don't change it. At the end of the day, the quality of my rodents and the health is what's important. So if they're breeding and they're looking healthy, regardless of the food you're using, just keep doing it, okay? Um, every now and again, I will give my breeders um, peanuts, uh, wild bird seed, and I also give them uh, vegetables. So if there's stuff like broccoli or carrots or um, uh, cucumber that's left over or wholemeal bread, I tend to use 50-50, best of both. Um, they will have that and they eat that perfectly well and fine. Again, guys, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying this is the way to do it. This is how I do it. I have good success with it and it works for me. And this may be some little help, tips and tricks that may help you uh, with your rodent breeding or have any questions. Um, regarding the breeding racks that I use, um, I find these work fantastic simply because what I do with these, as you can see, there's no food in there because I'm due to put some food in. But again, you get the idea. You know, they breed fine. There is 1.3 in those. Now, here's an interesting fact, guys. African soft furred rat females they have normally 12 pairs of nipples where most rodent females have eight or six to eight pairs of nipples so they can tend to have a, a biggish litter and do pretty well uh, on average they have about 10 babies per litter that's an average some can have more some can have less but as you can see there a lot of the females and the males are over here Again, the food hopper's got to be filled up, which is one of my jobs I check daily. But again, I don't overfeed them. As you can see, they will waste some. So I don't go too crazy with the amount of food. Um, obviously, if I was going away for a few days, I would make sure they were full. Um, but that is the way it is. I've got a self-watering system, which again, daily, I do check and make sure that the nipples are operating. And every... Uh, Saturday that I do a full clean out um, I, I do have a system and basically I flush through the the water system itself um, it's just a simple nine litre really useful tub on top as you can see it's slightly at an angle that's because the water flows down there is some air holes on top as well to allow good airflow but again that feeds both racks and once I get the other racks from Adam as well I'll set those up and get those underway so that's it in a nutshell. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's great regarding I have, if you like, rats on tap. Uh, the Maltes here do very well with the way I do things. Um, if you guys want to do it your way and it works for you, fantastic. So there we have it guys, I hope this helps. Like I said, um, it's just a little bit of um, a filling video if you like. Some people ask me, you know, do I, should I breed my own rodents? My advice to you is yes, do your research, get it all set up, start with a small group and then work your way forward. But I will keep you guys posted. Uh, I've got a clutch of eggs, which I'm gonna go and cut now uh, and I'll do another video for that. But for now guys, stay safe. Thanks for tuning in, take care and I'll speak to you guys in the next one.